In this video, we'll be going over IRS Form 730, Monthly Return for Wagers. So this is a tax form that's probably increased in importance over the past few years uh, significant, due to the significant increase in sports-related uh, betting and gambling. So uh, we'll go through this form, uh, particularly for the benefit of uh, people and businesses who uh, may be in the uh, business of accepting uh, gambling wagers, uh, whether or not they realize it. So uh, this is a fairly straightforward tax form. There's a lot of information in the form instructions. Uh, you can you can either go through the instructions uh, word by word, or uh, we break it down for you in a convenient article. You can uh, check it out at our website, uh, teachmepersonalfinance.com, type in IRS Form 730, and uh, there's a section in the form that specifically talks about uh, questions that might apply to you. What type of wagers are uh, subject to this tax? Uh, what kind of tax is it? What type of betting is not uh, part of this? So you can get all of that information uh, on in our article. In this video, we're going to focus on the form. It's a pretty straightforward one page form. And it's not even really one page. Uh, the form itself is about three quarters of the first page. And then there is a payment voucher that is at the bottom of the form. It's optional. We'll go through each of these step by step. And then the rest of this is three pages of instructions, specifically uh, what to do, uh, what's considered a, a wager under this part of the Internal Revenue Code. So we're talking about Section 4401A. And, you know, if you're in the business of accepting wagers, if you're conducting a pool or a lottery, or if you're required to be registered and you've received wagers uh, for or on behalf of another person, but you didn't report that person, then you must file this form. Uh, you must also be registered, which you can do by filing IRS Form 11C. That's the Occupational Tax and Registration Return for Wagering. So what ta type of tax are we talking about here? Well, it's an excise tax, basically, and it applies to both legal and illegal wagers placed within your state. So uh, uh, if, if, if you think that um, the IRS is going to report you uh, to law enforcement agencies for placing illegal uh, wagers, then uh, that is a separate issue from this discussion. Uh, the tax part of this form allows the IRS to uh, collect an excise tax of both legal and illegal wagers. So we'll get to that in a little bit more detail as we go through the form. So let's start at the top. Uh, pretty straightforward. In this case, our, our hero, John Doe, he uh, has started accepting wagers because he's he's in it for the money. So uh, his, his enterprise, Doe Gambling Enterprises, uh, you put the, the number, street address, and uh, the city, state, and zip code for, for your address, um, the month and year. So in this case, he's reporting on uh, any wagers that were collected in August of, two, or sorry, April of 2024. Uh, and then his employer identification number is just below. So a uh, couple of things, uh, these boxes right here. If this is your final return, you check that, and that means that the IRS will not e expect to receive your monthly tax return for wagers anymore. If you select the address change box, then this means that the IRS needs to update your address. Uh, you do not need to file IRS Form 8822 or 8822B. Uh, we'll put links to both of those resources in our show notes anyway, but you do not need to do this because this is considered a tax return. So when, when the IRS uh, specifies that a filing a tax return prompts them to update your address, uh, 
it does. So as long as you hit the address change box, because you're going to be sending this form in uh, every month. So uh, a couple of questions off the top of the head. If this is for April 2024, the form instructions state that it is due at the end of the month following the month that you're reporting. So for an April 2024, this would be due no later than uh, May 31st, 2024. So let's go ahead and go through this step by step. So line one, we're going to enter the gross amount of wagers that were accepted during the month not to include laid off wage, wagers. So uh, laid off wagers specifically mean wagers that uh, you may have uh, you may have accepted a wager, but then you placed it elsewhere. Uh, a lot of bookmakers may do this uh, because you need to keep the lines balanced on a certain event. For example, uh, if you're accepting wagers on the Super Bowl or the next UFC fight and there's a heavy favorite, then there might be a lot of people betting uh, for the favorite, uh, which means, you know, the bookkeeper may need to manage those uh, bets or wagers uh, so that they can uh, properly have or they can have the proper amount of money on each side of the line. So uh, a laid off wager would be a wager that they place with a second party or a third party. So you're going to enter those uh, into line two. So in this case, John Doe has $100,000 of wagers that he's reporting uh, that he accepted and then another 20,000 of laid off wagers for a total of $120,000. Now in line four, uh, in 4A and 4B, we're going to break down uh, the wagers based on whether or not they're legal or illegal. So as a matter of complete coincidence, uh, $100,000 worth of these wagers happen to be legal. They are taxed at an excise tax rate of a quarter of a percent or 0 0.0025 or 0.25%. So that calculation against $100,000 uh, happens to be $250. Line 4B is the taxes on wagers that were other than the, the ones reported in line 4A. So these would be wagers that are considered not to be legal in your particular state. So in 2018, the Supreme Court struck down a federal law as unconstitutional, uh, discussing what is legal and what is not legal. So now it is up to each state to determine, according to state law, what types of wagers are legal and illegal in that state. So in line 4B, these are the, this would be the tax on wagers other than wagers authorized under the law of the state in which they were accepted. So those wagers are taxed at 2% or eight times as much as the tax, uh, wagers reported on line 4A. So in this case, the remaining $20,000 times 2%, that's $400. The total tax on wagers, uh, we'll add that up, that's $650. Now, the IRS does not allow a credit unless you can support it with evidence. And uh, we'll, we break that, that requirement down a little bit more in depth in our uh, article. So if you want to know what type of evidence you need, uh, it really depends on the type of situation, uh, whether you actually paid the tax already uh, on a wager that you may have laid off or what the situation is. So for more in-depth detail, you can check out our article. So in this case, uh, we're reporting $150 worth of credits. So we're going to subtract that from the $650 amount. Uh, we're going to enter that uh, difference in line six. So the, the tax due is $500. So John Doe will sign in the signature field, put his date. If he's got a tax preparer, then he will, his tax preparer will go ahead and put that in. He'll put in his preparer tax ID number followed by the firm's name and address, employer ID number, so on and so forth. That's the tax prep, prep 
preparations uh, firm's uh, role in here. Now, John can uh, pay that tax in one of two ways. He can pay it electronically through the electronic federal tax payment system, or he can uh, mail in a voucher with his payment. So he would um, separate the payment or the payment voucher. Uh, he would enclose a check or a money order payable to the United States Treasury. He would be sure to include uh, the name of his company, address, employer ID number, uh, form 730, and then the year and the month that he's reporting. That's what he would write on the check. Uh, do not staple uh, either your voucher or your check or money order to this form 730. Do not staple anything to anything. So in line one of this uh, seven, uh, form 730V, the payment voucher, you'll enter the employer ID number, followed by the amount of your payment, followed by in line three, the year and month shown in, uh, in the form itself. So up here, uh, the instructions say, um, 04 slash 2024, because it specifically says month, month, year, 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 year. Down here, it wants the years first and then the month. And then on line four, you'll enter the business address. You can put your or business name and address. You can put your name if you're a sole proprietor, if you're a bookmaker. Uh, and then you would send this form, the voucher and the payment all to uh, the address right here. Department of the Treasury. Internal Revenue Service, Ogden, Utah, 84201-0100. So as I mentioned, um, this is a monthly filing. If you are not reporting any wagers for the month, but you still maintain your registration, you would still file this form, complete the information, except in line since six, you would write none, and then you would file that form for the month. So... Um, I think that covers everything we need to discuss for this form. Uh, as I mentioned, we break it down in more depth in the uh, form in, in our article. So, and, and we'll put links in the show notes to articles and videos that we've created uh, that might be pertinent to the tax topic here. So if you like our articles, please subscribe to our newsletter. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can... Uh, You'll be prompted to do so when you check out our website. If you like our YouTube videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, comments, or if there's another topic that you'd like to see discussed in an upcoming video, please hit me up in the comments section. Thank you very much and have a great day.